What's going on, everybody? This is the Blockchain Backer, bringing you the latest cryptocurrency news and analysis. Today, we're going to be taking a look over here at the XRP price chart. And it's been a while since we've done this, but we're going to be taking a look at XRP price predictions today. In particular, two different ones. Both of these are price measurements I've discussed for years at this point. First one being 10 to $13. The other one at about 25, about 25, blockchain backer, I've watched this channel for years. All you talk about is 10 to 13. I actually did talk about it quite a bit years ago, but over the years, my bias has leaned more towards that 10 to 13 area. But there was one time in markets in the morning where I did let it slip that I do see a case for 25. I said, eh, I don't feel like elaborating on it right now. I can't get anything past you guys. Since then, it gets brought up all the time. Hey, can you bring that up? Can you talk about that? What was that all about that you said there with 25? So in this video, I'm going to give the justifications for that 10 to 13, and I'm going to give the justifications for that 25 in the event that we have a bull run for XRP. Now, our community, I love you guys, but we are notorious for some pretty crazy moon math. I see a hundred dollars. I see a thousand dollars. When a thousand dollars doesn't get the clicks anymore, we go to ten thousand dollars. When ten thousand dollars doesn't do it, we go to a hundred thousand, then five hundred thousand. It is a little wild, but I'm gonna do what I always do. I'm gonna present the data on these two spots. The future will determine all as is typical. I'm just gonna use technical analysis for it and show you the justifications for why those two particular price areas are of interest. As many of you know, today was the launch date of the new course over there on bcbacker.com. It's been in the works for months. It's finally out. There's over 40 videos in here, including one section that was highly desired, which was Elliott Wave Theory. And in particular, we're going to talk about Elliott Wave Triangles in a Wave 4, which would mean that what we have been doing for the last four or five years is an Elliott wave triangle as we have done historically and that where we are now gives us a measurement similar to what we've done before. In addition, we're going to do a wave count. For those who are slightly familiar with Elliott waves, the idea is fairly simple. One, two, three, four, five for a motive wave, A, B, C for a corrective wave. And in each wave, we should see one, two, three, four, five, A, B, C, one, two, three, four, five, a, B, C, and one, two, three, four, five. But there's a problem on this chart that has been hard to solve for years now. And that's this guy right here, because what we clearly see in here is a one, two, three, four, five, A, B, C, one, two, three, four, five, which would make that whole thing an A, B, C. That's a problem, because if we're doing a bullish motive wave, we should be having five waves to the upside, not an ABC to the upside. So what does it all mean? I'm going to give you a little bit of a preview into Elliott wave triangles today and show you how this plays so similarly to what we had back here and why that plays into that $25 area. In addition, we will reference the PDF file that is attached to the Elliott Wave Triangle section, which is included on many of these videos in here, which you can even download here on the course to print them out yourself. You can even have additional learning links in here to learn more about a particular topic. But as we can see in here, in this video, we do have something called a contracting triangle. And so we're gonna talk about that, we're gonna reference to the sheet, and we'll reference to additional material. Now, this is all technical analysis. I'm not here to tell you the Fed is gonna buy you back your XRP or that it's gonna be the Federal Reserve's world currency or any of that type of stuff. As I try to show the 10 to $13, we're gonna be using Fibonacci retracements and extensions. We're gonna be using the comparing multiple assets at once. And we're gonna be talking about importance of tokenomics and the market cap, which is how we're gonna to come to this conclusion. So let's start there. We'll build the case for that. And then we can move to the 25. The first things to take notice of is what Bitcoin did back in 2021, right? Bitcoin did a 4.236 extension of the 2018 bear market. Now your eyes may say to you, nope, not so fast. Take a look. It actually came up short. Okay, fair point. However, Ethereum did do a 4.236 extension of the 2018 bear market. Actually, once again, it came up short. And Ethereum Classic, while it almost got there, it actually did come up slightly short as well. So what happened here? 
and it actually pertains to the tokenomics of these assets. They all got very close, but what was interesting was that their market caps actually did hit them very accurately. Ethereum Classics actually pinpoint nailed it, Ethereum's market cap nailed it, and Bitcoin's market cap nailed it. But why did all of these assets come up slightly short on their price charts? And it has to do with inflation. Over the course of 2018, 2019, and 2020 into 2021, Ethereum was being mined every single day. It was very popular to have a graphics card set up called a mining rig. And everyday normal people were mining Ethereum all the time. And a reward was pushed out. And even just for one year from 2020 to 2021, the inflation rate for Ethereum was 4.5%. That meant the entire supply of Ethereum increased by 4.5% over the course of that year. And so what we noticed in 2021 was that several of these assets responded to what their market cap did and not what their actual price did per token. So Ethereum's market cap reaches the full 4.236 extension. But since we go three and a half years here of over 4% inflation annually on Ethereum, the coin gets diluted in the market cap. Market cap was the thing that mattered about getting to a 4.236 extension, but three and a half years of inflation of above 4% means the dilution doesn't allow the actual token price to reach all the way out to a 4.236. It was also the case for Bitcoin and also the case for Ethereum Classic. Their market caps nailed the 4.236 extension, but due to years of inflation, although it be low, Bitcoin at the time was like 3.5% inflation annually. Stack that up over the course of three and a half years, while well, the market cap can still hit the 4.236, but three and a half years of 3.5% inflation annually dilutes the coin enough or dilutes the market cap enough amongst more coins to cause the price to come up a little bit short. Now you may be thinking to yourself, we've really stepped far away from talking about XRP here, but we had to lay that foundation first to understand, we hit market caps for the top two assets. In particular, we hit 4.236 extension market caps for the top two assets, but we didn't hit them on their price charts. So can we just apply the same methodology that we've had here for Bitcoin and we've had for Ethereum? Number one and number two, historically, XRP has been number three. Currently, Binance Coin sits there in number three. XRP sits there in number four. If we exclude Tether and USD Coin, the stable coins, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Binance Coin, XRP. If we assume that XRP can just do the same thing, go for a 4.236 extension on its market cap. That's it. That's the run. We're all done. Where does that take us to? Well, if we apply it just to the price chart, price chart's gonna get us actually a little bit higher than $13. It's really gonna get us close to like almost 14, but it does land in those 13s in there, in particular at about 1370. If we did a full 4.236 extension over here, just on the price chart, but it might not be fair to do a measurement like that on the actual price chart with the behavior that we saw from the cryptocurrency market in 2021, and that it seems that the market caps mattered. So a little trick we can do over here on CoinTrader Pro is that we can actually measure out the market cap. We could also do this over there on trading view, but we could figure out what would the 4.236 extension market cap be for XRP. According to CoinTrader Pro, it'd be about $615 billion. According to trading view, it'd be $533 billion. Let's just use a conservative number of both of them. We'll use the number from here on trading view. If we were going to hit a 4.236 extension with XRP on the market cap, a little trick here, is that we could actually just measure what would the rise be from the price of where it's currently at right now. It would be a rise of about 2,000%. A rise for XRP from its current location of about 2,000% gets us right up into that box. It actually gets us right at about $10.06. Why is that? Well, because we've had like 6% inflation for XRP for the last several years. Market cap can do a full 4.236 extension like we saw for Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Ethereum Classic. But if we account for the diluted market cap due to the inflation of supply over the course of the last several years, it lands us right there at about $10. Now, what's the thing to take into account right there? That's if we went there today. What happens next month when more XRP gets added to the circulating supply? What about the month after that? And the month after that? And the month after that? Depending on how long this takes... 
And if XRP reaches out to a full extension of its market cap, we could still continue to see more inflation take place for the XRP supply. And while the market cap could still go here, due to more supply being added to the circulating supply, this number will shift down every single month. So that 10 to $13, we'd essentially have to go there right now. But if XRP wants to act like Ethereum did, and if it wants to act like Bitcoin did, and go a full 4.236 extension on the market cap, with the current circulating supply and the inflation that we've seen for the last several years, it lands us at like $10 on the dot. However, by next month and the month after that, that number will have shifted below $10. But then the question comes to say, is it reasonable to think that XRP's market cap could actually get that high? I've shown this many times before, that there seems to be a threshold for where XRP is kind of forced to stop out with its market cap, and it has to do with Ethereum. And we can compare Ethereum's market cap to XRP's, and what we will actually see in here is that the threshold for where it really gets stopped is whenever it kind of reaches out there to Ethereum. At least that's what we saw in 2017, two separate times, bypassed it slightly, lost it, bypassed it slightly, lost it, bypassed it, lost it, bypassed it, lost it, could not get above Ethereum. However, crossed over it approximately five, six times over the course of two years. Judging by where Ethereum is, Ethereum has kind of reached the status of like not being an altcoin. I know that sounds crazy, but it has maintained its dominance through the entire year of 2022 and here into 2023, still sitting at about 20% dominance. That's not what it did in 2018. It actually fell from 26% down to 7%, but throughout all of this maintained 20%, very unusual. And in the circumstance of where if we were just going to see Ethereum go into a retrace, we were just going to see Bitcoin go into a retracement. And if Ethereum landed somewhere in here, and as we've seen in other cycles where there's nothing but a retracement happening in the majors, but a big run up in the rest of the market, where would XRP land in the circumstance of Ethereum just being there in a retracement level for its market cap? And the current rise for XRP from where it's at with its current market cap to get into this range is right there at about that level. 1,700%, get a little bit higher, 19, 2,000. 2,000 does not exceed the all-time high of Ethereum. However, it does slightly bypass it, as we saw in both circumstances, back here and back here. Temporary, short-lived but able to get as high as 100% above Ethereum's market cap and able to get as high as 52% above Ethereum's market cap. If you were to be conservative and just choose a small one and say 52% above Ethereum's market cap in the event of it just being a retracement in here, you know, 52% above the 702 retracement gets you into an all-time high. Eh, I don't know about that. From current location of where Ethereum is at right now, 52% gets you there. 100% lands you right up in here. So you're kind of left with this whole region in here if you're just going to catch up to Ethereum. Is that a reasonable location to get to? It's in the area. It's in the percentages, right? The lower lower bound is 1,250%. The upper bound is 2,700%. Somewhere in the middle, right? Right around that 2,000%. I think it's fair. It doesn't exceed Ethereum's all-time high in regards to its market cap. It doesn't really break a lot of the rules, right, of what it has done before, but it catches Ethereum's market cap, but sets a very hard resistance there at that level. So I think when it comes from just like the positioning of the market of who's number one, who's number two, who's number three, there's been that battle there with Ethereum and with XRP at their market caps. There have certainly been times where Ethereum's market cap is much higher than XRP's. We've seen it as high as over 700% just back in 2017. Currently right now, it's right at about the exact same amount, about 700% above right now. So while it feels like Ethereum is just a million miles away in regards to its market cap, it's something that we've had before and been able to catch it before. But it puts a hard limit on it saying, you shall not pass. So personally, this is my favorite target. This is the one that I'm still leaning on. This is definitely where I'm taking 65% off the table. Been waiting years for that 10 to $13, but as we can see it and what the math is saying here, the market caps mattered in 2021 
And the thing that made the token price or the coin price come up short of the 4.236 extension was inflation. And currently with the years of inflation, which is not atrocious, 6% is not crazy. It's on the lower bound, but stack so many years together and 6% keep shuffling that thing down. And right now it's, it's just north of $10. We all kind of know what happens with round numbers. Bitcoin to $100,000, Doge to a dollar, Ethereum to $10,000. I think it's important to take note in here. We essentially have to go there today <laughs> for $10. And by next month, we'll know if we've now dropped below that $10 threshold. But still, to this day, this zone is my primary area of interest. I've tried to build the case on why when it comes to Ethereum's market cap that we have been able to catch it multiple times, but it does put a hard resistance there. And by showing how the market caps of Ethereum, Bitcoin, and Ethereum Classic all reached their 4.236 extensions. However, the inflation over the course of several years caused their prices to come up a little bit short. I'm a believer that we can get to the 4.236 extension, but I have to take those tokenomics into consideration. So primary target for me still feels like hopium. It's so far away, but it all checks out when it comes to how far Bitcoin went, how far Ethereum went. And it takes into consideration those complications of inflation versus the market cap. So that's my number one spot. That's where my biggest area of interest is. That's where I'm taking money off the table. And I feel that's important to say before we move on to the next one, because I know how a lot of people act. Blockchain backer is saying we're going to $25. <laughs> no, I'm going to show you the Elliott waves for it. I'm going to show you the contracting triangle. I'm going to show you price behavior from history to build a case for why it's not crazy. Now, what would have to be the case in order for that $25 to get hit based on what we were just talking about with XRP's market cap and with Ethereum's market cap? One, XRP is going to do something crazy and it's going to bypass Ethereum's market cap by more than we've ever seen. Or two, Ethereum's going to have to go into a new all-time high. So I will put out a video later this week discussing Ethereum, but we'd essentially have to take this as an extended flat correction, which is an Elliott wave correction, which is all discussed here on bcbacker.com. But we'd have to consider this an extended flat that could set a new all-time high. And the thing about Ethereum is that it does meet all qualifications for an extended flat. So... Alternatively, Ethereum breaks out into a new all-time high. XRP still catches up to it, but then finds resistance there at the all-time high, right? Otherwise, we have to say we're doing something different. We're going above it. And the flippening between XRP and Ethereum has happened. You know, you could speculate that all you want. People would love that. I'm just trying to play by the rules of the market without going down that speculative rabbit hole and say, how have we behaved before? If that were the circumstance, if XRP was going to get a market cap way up there, we would likely need to see Ethereum doing it as well. We'd likely need to see some serious action happening throughout the whole market, including in Bitcoin. So take those things into account too. Block reward having, the stock market needing to break out into new all-time highs, all these different variables of what has happened historically would also need to happen, including Ethereum breaking out into a new all-time high for us to continue following the rules of the past and for XRP to be able to get out to this price level. So I think it's important to lay that foundation down really quick that if we're talking about this, probably a mandatory requirement based on the past would be a new all-time high for Bitcoin, a new all-time high for Ethereum. But one thing that has been observed about XRP's price behavior throughout all of this has been the similarities to the price behavior throughout all of this. Not only because they visually look similar, but because their percentages are very similar. In the fall of 2014, XRP's price fell by over 95%. In the fall of 2018 through 2020, XRP's price fell by over 96%. So 1% differences there. Then during the fall of 2015, XRP's price fell by 85.5%. And then in the fall of 2021 to 2022, the fall also was 85.5%. So what do we have here? We have similar sized falls from the peak of euphoria, retracements, followed by similar sized falls again, 
We've looked at this stuff many times. We're doing very similar accumulation schematics down in here. And if we lay these on top of each other, they obviously are just identical in regards to the depths in which they have fallen in here, where we can line these up and have nearly identical falls. So the question comes back to what was happening back in here. My favorite term to use, of course, is crash, retrace, reaccumulation, breakout. Same goes for XRP in 2018 through 2023. Crash, retrace, reaccumulation, breakout. Same thing goes for Bitcoin in 2018 through 2021. Crash, retrace, reaccumulation, breakout. But there is actually a technical term for it, and it's called a contracting triangle. And it is a Elliott wave structure. And these only take place in wave four before heading on to fifth wave. What have we talked about with Bitcoin for the last several years? It has been that it's been in one big super cycle in here. And so when we were expecting the top, it's because we were looking for the completion of a super cycle. This would have been wave four accumulation as we experienced in here for wave four accumulation back in 2013. Go on, hit the extension, come crumbling back down. But again, same thing, right? Crash, retrace, reaccumulation, breakout, it's considered a contracting triangle, and this is an Elliott wave, and they consist of an A, B, C, D, E in a perfect world. But many times, E doesn't really come all the way back down. But we see the initial crash of A, the retrace of B, the reaccumulation of C, D, and E, as also shown here on the PDF, A, B, C, D, E, and then onward and upward we continue. As we can see here, over on stockcharts.com, which I have the link for over here on bcbacker.com. We can see that a horizontal triangle is a pattern that consists of five sub waves that form three, 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 three structures labeled as A, B, C, D, E and travels in a sideways pattern. A horizontal triangle can be either expanding or contracting. And the sub waves are composed of complex combinations. But in general, what we see in here is a series of ABCs, 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 right? For A, B, C, D, E. So we have this nice big bull run for Ethereum and for Bitcoin here in 2021. But XRP posts a big fat ABC with five waves in here for wave A and an ABC followed by a one, two, three, four, five giving us that ABC rather than an impulsive wave to head to the upside, give us that wave five, like we got with Bitcoin, but instead we get ourselves stuck. So I'll take these off, but as shown in the video on BC Backer, we know we're supposed to have an ABCDE. We see that over here on the PDF. We see that over here on stock charts, comprised of ABC corrections going back and forth. So what do we have? We have an ABC. What do we get? In 2021 to 2022, we get another A, B, C, which leaves you with A, B, C, D, E, then out, as this would become our contracting triangle, which also means this would have to be an A, B, C. And that would have to mean that we have a one, two, three, four, five, followed by a one, two, three, four, five. This is where the most confusion in Elliott waves happens in regards to counting out one, two, three, four, five in here, because most people have not done enough study of Elliott waves. And what's the one rule they all know? Wave four cannot cross across the plane of wave one, wave one, right? That's like the hard rule. Everybody knows that. There are multiple places that wave four is completely acceptable to cross wave one in a five count wave. And guess what? Wave A is a place that you could do it. So is wave C. So we have an obvious ABC, ABC, ABC. It's what we're looking for. What do we need now? We need like an ABC followed by another ABC. That's where it's gonna get challenging right here. Because while we would love to say, this is what's gonna happen, right? We're gonna do this. In many circumstances we do, but you know, check out what Bitcoin did. A, B, C, D, E, gone. Could that be? A triangle may extend by having its fifth wave also be a triangle of lesser degree. Instead of wave E being a three wave structure, it will be another horizontal triangle. Wave E will be another horizontal triangle. 
And so instead of big deep corrections back down to the bottom of this thing, we just run flat. Then we break out, back test the triangle, and off and away we go. So essentially getting us to a point where we're still waiting to be able to get out of here. And then likely stall, have E, and then go for breakout. So how do we measure how far this measured move should be? Well, we do it by taking the length of the distance traveled on the entire triangle from top to bottom. And that will see that where we get our breakout at is approximately as high as we actually do end up going, traveling all the way over here. So using that same math there to say, can we do the same thing from top to bottom? If we eventually work our way out here and get a breakout, say right around here, how high does it let us go? Oh, well, moon math gets us up there into that area. Again, that's if that happens here by October, right? What if it happens a little bit later on? Well, then it shifts us down even more. But one has to find it intriguing to say the Elliott wave count is that of a contracting triangle composed of a series of A, B, C corrections back in each direction. If this isn't blatantly obvious to you, certainly these ones have to be. And if you were to have a measured move of a contracting triangle, it gets you out there to that moon math. It gets you out there to those levels that the fibs got us there last time. And it gets you out there to an equivalent move of these percentages that have been the same out into these wild prices of 25 26 27 dollars typically i'm going to be pretty pessimistic about something like that it's pretty far i mean think of the things that would have to happen ethereum would have to set a new all-time high bitcoin would have to set a new all-time high xrp would just have to say forget the 4.236 extension we're just going full mooney but the issues that boil down here is that, one, have we ever done something of that magnitude before from a percentage standpoint? Yes, we have done it as a percentage standpoint. Have we done it from that type of a market cap increase? No, no way, not at all. This increase from here to here, I mean, it's just nothing. From 30 cents, you know, $25, it's a market cap of like 1.25 trillion or 1.5 trillion, right? Bigger than Bitcoin. It would take a lot to get there, right? But the compelling argument for it is... The long duration contracting triangle composed of ABCs in both directions. And that the measured moves from the top of the triangle to the bottom of the triangle give you an extension reach that takes you out into that boundary. As we saw happen with Bitcoin with a contracting triangle of ABCDE. What's the thing that XRP is missing at this point? It would be like the E that it has ABC needs D and E. Unless if like down here, it's more of a morphed kind of D and E that's happening in here. Which seems, you know, that's a tough count. This is much cleaner up here, and I, I don't know how I feel about saying that that is D and E. But undoubtedly, this is an ABC that we have here. ABC. This is an ABC. This is an ABC. And we're exhibiting behavior even on large time frames, like the monthly time frame, of what happens when we've come out of the bottoms of bears for XRP. Notice here, even in 2018, once we come off these lows and get way out of here on the stochastic RSI, we're off, right? That, that low of that, I guess we can call it a triangle now, is in. We've seen that same behavior over there in Bitcoin, Ethereum, all those things. When, whenever the monthly stochastic RSI comes off the floor, bottom of that move has been in. So we have ABC, 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 and we're getting oscillating indicators indicating the same thing. So when people ask me, hey, tell me about that $25 thing. The three things that would have to happen is that one, it would have to be the same size move as we saw last time. It would have to be interesting FIB placements, which is what was the measurement for that last time. And then it would have to be that this whole thing is a contracting triangle composed of ABC, 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 ABC out, which it does appear we have those elements up until this point. And it is massive. So like a phrase prior to this, I'm certain <laughs> there's going to be people saying, BCB says it's going to 25. But the reason why 25, 26, 27, whatever you want to call it, has even any validity to talk about in the first place is that one, Elliott wave contracting triangle composed of ABCs, that's what the move would be. Two, Fibonacci extensions. And three, an equivalent sized move from the past, which is what we saw on both Bitcoin and Ethereum in 2021, sort of baked into the cake of the market makers, as you would say. So to each their own on which one they think it is. Like I said, I lean much more on talking about catching up on these market caps, 4.236 extension, just like Bitcoin and Ethereum have already done. But 
in the circumstance of, let's say, Ethereum starts cranking out towards a new all-time high and that this is a completed extended flat, suddenly it opens the door wide open on this thing. Uh, that has an argument to it. As of right now, the math does not work for the market cap of XRP to catch up to Ethereum. Even if Ethereum gets right up near its all-time high, the math just doesn't work for XRP to go cranking above you know, 10 or $13. But if Ethereum does go into new all-time high, it really does kind of open that door up. So in order for me to actually say, hey, I am actually a believer that $25 is in play, I have my rules there, right? Like I need Ethereum to go to, I need Bitcoin to go to. You get me both of those, it really opens that door. And that's probably the thing that I'll be looking for first before you ever kind of get me off of here, off this $10 area and start getting me believing in the $25 area is that we'd probably need to see Ethereum and Bitcoin going first or everything's going at the exact same time, but Ethereum's just staying ahead of XRP and XRP's just chasing behind its tail and they're both flying up to the upside at the same time. And then finally, XRP catches the, uh, the market cap of Ethereum much higher. Uh, but that seems to kind of have been a golden rule throughout the cryptocurrency market for the last seven or so years. So till then, I have to keep my expectations right here. But in the event of Ethereum setting a new all-time high or Bitcoin, uh, I will become a much bigger believer that maybe we could get our way all the way up there. And that this was just the most epic contracting triangle, Elliott wave triangle that we've seen in crypto. And if I thought there was a 0% chance that Ethereum couldn't do that, um, I probably wouldn't even make this video in the first place. But there is another Elliott Wave section in here called flats or zigzags, flats, and WXYs. And we, I go through Ethereum and show that Ethereum has actually done all the things that a completed extended flat would do. That would imply a bottom being in for Ethereum and that this was a corrective wave as we pointed to back on this extended flat and that it has definitely met all the rules for an Elliott wave flat. So it's not ruled out that Ethereum can't set a new all time high. And if it did, it opens up that door. So we'll cover Ethereum later this week, maybe even tomorrow. But I wanted to show you the wave count of the range that XRP has been in for the last four and a half years, five and a half years, and that it has the appearances of the most epic contracting triangle, which would have a target price of about $25. So we'll see how things play out. I think one of the first things we'd all be looking for is just to at least get back up to the top, do some sideways action, and then a breakout. Until then, we wait, we speculate, we count waves, and look to see if we can get the signs that we're looking for from other aspects of the market too. And crazy as it may sound, it seems like we are. So, <laughs> I'm beat. This is a long video. It's a long day. It was launch day for the new course. Some of you guys will be getting notifications of this video coming out and being like, why is he putting videos out in the middle of the night? <laughs> I said I would get a video out today. It's my second video today. I'm back. It feels good to be back and to be able to focus my video attention back on videos on the YouTube channel. I could not miss the opportunity to put in a 15 hour day on launch day of bcpacker.com. Many of you probably heard that $25 comment maybe a month and a half ago. It was probably the day I had recorded a section kind of discussing that in the course. And I was like, oh, I'm not ready to talk about that, <laughs> but I let it slip. Obviously, I would think we'd have to see a lot of elements showing themselves in the market. But in the circumstances, if we did see Ethereum going up and if we did see Bitcoin going up in a new all-time highs, hey, it opens the conditions available for it. And there's no, no question the Elliott Wave count on it up until this point uh, with how it's been contracting and compressing in those ABCs. It just completely matches Wave 4, ABCDE, contracting triangle. So... All right, guys, I hope that you're doing well. Um, thank you for all the positive reception and the positive feedback on the course. Uh, you know, today kind of give you a little bit of a peek inside of, of what's in there. Just on a couple of different sections just to kind of peek. Of course, we, there's videos in there too that are very specific to a topic. Obviously, in this one, we were bouncing all over the place. We essentially used TradingView. We used CoinTrader Pro. We were doing Fibonacci extensions. We were doing Stochastic Relative Strength Index. We were doing bars Pattern and Fractals. We were comparing multiple assets at once. We were doing percentages and time measurements. We were doing wave rolls, triangles, flats, zigzags, and tokenomics, man. So if any of that was over your head, 
I've tried to lay it out in a very easy to understand, explained way over here on bcbacker.com with over 40 videos. It's 11 hours of videos. Today's the milestone is released out there. Otherwise, I need to hurry up and start exporting this thing so it doesn't get out at literally midnight. But all right, guys, that's going to be it for this one. I want to thank you so much for watching. If you could, please like this video and give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified of when I create new content and when I go live. As always, this is not investment advice and I am not a financial advisor. But if you ever need a pick me up or a little bit of reassurance, just remember that the blockchain backers got your back. Have a good one.